So for you to see that, that light was traveling like this, right? Then when it hit the air, right, this side sped up and it got bent this way. This side, when it got bent, got bent down this so way. So water acts like a divergent lens? Yes. And so, but what's happening though, in terms of what you're going to see though, when you look at those rays, you're, they're going to look like they were focusing at a point in front of the fish. So if you're on the outside looking in, the fish is going to appear closer to you than what the fish actually is. Because this light, it's exactly what Ryan said. When this light hits this point, it acts like a divergent lens. That light spreads out. So when your when your eye try when your when you look at it, it's bringing it back to a point closer. Now this isn't on your equation sheet. I will give you this equation on the test. Okay, you just know how, you just have to know how to use it. So what this tells you is that, and the whole key to this is that you have to realize which direction the light is going. So if you've got that light reflecting off of that fish, okay. So S naught is the object distance, how far the fish is actually behind the, the, the barrier that you're looking at. Okay, so the fish is actually 10 centimeters deep. So this is N2, okay, so this is where it's going to end up. So that, that light is going to end up in air, so that has an index of refraction of 1. This is where you start. Sometimes you see this written as N over N naught, okay? So if you see it, that means the exact same thing. If you have an N over N naught, it means the same thing as N2 over N1. It's the exact same idea. So I'm going to take 1 divided by 1.33, multiply by 10, I get 7.5. So if I'm, if I'm outside looking at the fish, okay, I'm going to think the fish is 7.5 centimeters away from the glass. In reality, it's 10 centimeters away. Okay? Got that. Now, if you reverse it, so let's say that you are Frank the fish, okay, and you are looking at, I don't know, the can of fish food that's on the outside, okay? So, oh, I don't want Frank to be a jellyfish. <laughs> Okay. More like a <laughs> What's wrong with Frank being a jellyfish? <laughs> now, here's the deal. If you're Frank, though, looking at the fish food, so this light's going to come in here. It's going to bounce off the fish food, right? And then what's it going to do? Once it, once it hits the water, which direction is it going to go? In or is it going to bend towards the middle or flatten out. So it's coming in here, right? It's going to hit the optically dense medium. So what's it going to do? Upwards. Is it going to float? Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Up. I've heard both. Uh, it's going to flatten so out. So it's going to come in like this, right? So this side is going to this side is going to slow down first, right? And so it's going to go. It will align more closely with the horizontal. Yeah. Okay. I'm bad at explaining things, so that's the best explanation I can give okay. currently. So, when it hits, it's going to go something more like this. Okay? So, what that means is if you're Frank the fish, right, and you trace that back, actually, let me do this again. Hold on. I just screwed that up. You didn't screw up the bottom half? Yeah. I didn't draw it big enough. We'll draw the, yes, we'll just, we'll just draw the eye out here. Oh. We'll make it a little bit more severe. Uh, but isn't that... I just didn't. I just. I didn't just, just give myself enough room. You did that. Back. Did you do that oh, backwards? Oh, with the eyes in the water now. Yeah. So you're in the out. You're 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 Frank the fish, looking outside. Okay. Okay. 
So as that light comes in, okay, right, it's going to go towards the horizontal. So when you're looking at it, it's going to look like it's actually further away. So because you try and trace those rays back to that point where it converges, so you're trying to work backwards and you're trying to get that light to go out out there. So if you go back to that same equation, and let's say that this thing is 10 centimeters away, and you go N2 over N1 times SO. So in this case, you'd have, because of the fact that that light is 1.33, right? So that light is starting out at that index of refraction of one, and it's going to hit the it's going to hit this, and then it's going to slow down. So it's going to go 1.33 divided by one times 10 centimeters, and you get 13.3 centimeters. So if you're inside the water, if you're Frank the fish it's going to appear that the object is actually further away because when it hits this and it flattens out, and then if you, if you extrapolate those lines back out, then it looks like it's further away. So, so if you're going from a more optically dense to a less optically dense, it appears further away. But if you're going from a less, which is what typically what we do, because we in air and we're looking at a fish in water. So what we're gonna do when we look at that fish, it looks like that fish is actually closer than what it is. But if you're on the outside looking, if you're under the water, okay, and let's say for example, let's say you're under the water and I'm and I'm looking out and I see, you know, Peyton standing on the side, then it's going to me it's gonna look like Peyton's further away than what he actually is. Okay. Oh, I got that one done. So are things in space? Slightly farther away than they look. Huh? Are things in space slightly farther away than they look? Yeah, but not enough to, I mean, on a relative scale. Okay. Yeah. Depends. The farther you are away, the more the bigger the difference. The farther it is away. There's so many mangoes left. The initial refraction of air is 1.0003. How much of a stream on this video? Oh, we are having the same podcast. I don't know, are we? We can. Okay, everybody has to. I shall be the judge. There's too much going on over there. I want to throw something at you. Okay, so here's what we've got. So let's say this beam of light is coming along, and this is what I was telling you about, where it's coming in pretty parallel, right? And it's going to hit this, and let's say that the, the body of water is one meter deep. And I want to know, I'm going to shine this thing three meters back from here, it's going to hit this and it's going to bounce. So what I want to know is how far is it, this going to land from this point? So here's the easiest thing to do. If you can find this angle, then it turns into a geometry problem. Because you can, if you can find this angle, oh, this is the side adjacent, you're trying to find the side, adjacent, the side opposite. Okay, hey, that's a tangent function, right? So if I can use the idea that the tangent of theta is going to equal the opposite over the adjacent, right? So I know my adjacent side, that's one meter, right? So I don't know the opposite side. So if I could figure out what this angle is, then 
I can work the problem, but I don't know what this is. But here's the deal. So I'm going from air, right, into water. So that's 1, and that's 1.33. Okay? Cool. So here's the deal. So if I know I can take the tangent of theta times 1 meter, I can get that side opposite. But how can I use this to find the angle? So here's the key. Work backwards. Assume that you're shining this light here. Assume, assume that this light's going from here. It's going to hit this, and then it's going to run parallel with it. So if I can find my critical angle using this, I can substitute that in for theta. Right? So if I can find that critical angle, I don't I need to substitute that in. So I don't really get what I'm supposed to be looking at with this graph. It... Okay, so you, that's what I was trying to show you. You're shining a laser almost parallel with oh, the surface. Okay, so fish tank. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so this is a body of water. You're shining that laser like this. Okay? Okay. And it's going to hit this point. And you're going to try and figure out how far beyond this point that laser is going to go. So, but you, and, and, and it's one meter deep, so it's about like it. So you're trying to find, if I can find this angle, right, then it becomes a trig function. So if you, if you try and find that angle, so okay, right? So that critical angle is going to be the inverse sine of, in this case, 1 divided by 1.33, and you get what, 4, what is it? Is it 48 point? 48.3 degrees? Okay. So basically, if you know that, then you can take the tangent of, make sure that's right, take, take the inverse side of 1 divided by 1.33. 48.8. Is it 48.8? Mm -hmm. So... 48.8 degrees, multiply that by 1, boom, that's going to get you that distance, okay? So, when you, when you get this problem like this, think of working backwards when you're shining that light like this, it's going to come down, but think of it starting here and running it parallel with that, okay? Because that, that's the only way you can find that angle. All right, now let's say that I give you this problem. Okay, so you've got a lens the focal length of 30 centimeters and it produces an inverted real image twice the size of the object. What is the object distance and what type of lens is it? So back up. 
You're, you're, you're on the right track. Or is it 60? 60 would make it the same size. Yeah. Okay, that, that, that's, that's well, it's got to be bigger than 30. Okay. Can we get Pure Helpers, Kim Club, and TikTok to the small There's group? There's a TikTok club? Pure Helpers, Seriously? Kim Club, TikTok Club. These are your last three photos <laughs> okay. for today. So is it, let's start with this. Is it a concave lens or a convex lens? Convex. Why can't it be a concave lens? Okay, concave lens is never going to converge it and flip it over, right? So you know it has to be a convex lens, right? So by virtue of the fact that it's a convex lens, what's going to be the sign of my focal length? Positive. Focal length. Positive. Positive, because that light's going to be converging, and any time you bring stuff together, that's a positive thing, right? Okay? So now my focal length is going to be a positive, in this case, 30 centimeters, right? Now, what's my magnification? Negative, uh, negative 2. Negative 2, right? Oh. Okay, or at least 2. Mm -hmm. So what else is your magnification equal uh, SI over SL. Psi over? So, so, right? It's negative psi over cell, but... But let, let's, just, let's just work it like, oh. we'll worry about negative signs later. Psi over cell, right? Actually, no, it isn't. Yeah. So, if this is the case, the only way that I can get a magnification that's twice that is if... Psi is equal to, two psi is equal to two, is equal yeah. to one. So, two so is going to equal... One psi, yeah. Dirt. Over so, right? So, the only way it can work. That's the only way I can get a magnification of two. So, now, go to your basic thin lens equation. You have one over psi plus one over so equals one over your focal length, right? Okay? So, we just said, though, that psi is going to equal twice the so. So, I got one over two so to so plus 1 over so is going to equal 1 over my focal length, right? Now, when I take 1 over so plus 1 over 1 half so plus so, what do I get? Uh, three, three, three halves over so? Because th this is like 2 over 2, right? So I'd have, it's going to equal 1 over, and keep in mind, that's down below. So if you do a little cross multiplication, you get 3f equals 2 so. Huh. So 3 times my focal length of 30 centimeters divided by 2 is going to equal, so so equals 45. Now, now, how could you see if you got it right? Uh, you can draw a ray diagram, okay? So, oh God, not more ray diagrams. Actually, make so me focal You could, right? So, my object distance, what we said was 40, right? So, my focal length was 30. So, this is just kind of a rough sketch. Actually, this can be more like this. So there's my other focal length, right? So, it's going to come along, boom, hit that. The other one's going to go through. That middle, which is a horribly fine gray diagram. But imagine that becomes twice as big. Okay. All right, so on this assignment, and this started many, 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 probably four or five years ago. Because I had a bunch of whiny little students that wanted two things. Oh, God. No, 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 chill out. Okay. They wanted to cover, and they wanted to earn some extra credit. I don't want either of those. Ryan, God damn it, just, I said you don't have to do it. Okay. okay? Just let me tell the story. Okay. Just. Okay. Okay. So to appease the kids, and this is purely up to you, okay? So you've got the assignment, you've got two problems here, and, and the rest of these <laughs> come out of the book, okay? <laughs> so up to, and this is up to my discretion, okay? Up to 10 points of extra credit, 
you can color the fish and the little plant and the water, okay, right, for up to 10 points of extra credit. And if you don't want to, you don't have to, okay? But if you want to color, right, and, we, and typically we cut them and we put them up in the room so it looks like a little, we typically put them all, uh, there's still one up there. Uh, <laughs> you can put them up on that window so that we kind of get the aquarium look, okay? So, huh? Are you excited, guys? I'm very excited. She's skeptical. I, I, I'm very skeptical. I feel like there's a catch. What? No, there is no catch. She just... Except the fish. Okay. But, but it is up to my discretion. Now, if you just take a pencil and go and say, oh, here it's colored, you're not getting any extra. Well, it's colored. It's, not it's up to no. my discretion. <laughs> I hate giving extra credit, so I'm going to have to be horribly impressed to <laughs> horribly impressed to give all 10 extra credit points. Do we have to be the ones who come? Yeah, how much did yes. that Yes, you have you cannot farm this out. What if what if my dog eats my fish? <laughs> Tough luck. What if I just take a goldfish to the <laughs> Like the cracker? Yeah. <laughs> no, like an actual fish. Oh, really? yeah. okay. What if I take a picture? I bought a fish rose yeah. so I could take this paper. Yeah. Here. Now, so on the assignment. When you get to number 64, okay, on number 64, this is the only one where you actually have to draw out the ray diagram, okay? So on number 64, okay, problem 64, this is one where it's worth a lot of points, but you have to, like, draw it out. Yes, you can use the Finley's equation, but fundamentally, you want to use ray diagrams on number 64. You can do it on your paper, but it's going to be easier to use your other way. So, anyway. Okay, so I'm done.